It's okay to be a hater in sports. Like, hating in sports is a part of the game. Like, I like when our fans are so engaged and so passionate that they just don't like the other team. But being racist, sexist, and violent with your words, come on now, what are we doing? The Atlanta Dream is a WNBA team with a bit of a controversial history. One of its co-owners has been criticized as possibly the least effective owner in sports. Group cannot be a representation of what the WNBA would want in their league. This is our league. This was built, like, I feel like as a women's basketball historian myself, I've been watching since I was five. I was here before the league started, as a lot of the fans on social media feel the same. Back in 2020, the franchise removed an owner due to her Republican views during a time when social activism was on the rise. That ain't a representation of us. Y'all not like us. They not like us, okay? So please don't confuse me saying motivated by hate by meaning hating on a team the way a normal diehard fan would. Although the team claims to have good attendance, they play in a small venue that can only accommodate 3,500 fans. Crowds tend to show up mainly when star player Caitlin Clark is playing. For instance, let me just give you some examples. A diehard Falcons fan can hate the Saints, but they would be going a little bit too far if they created nude AI pictures of Saints players and then sent them to the Saints players' families. That's what Caitlin Stans have done to Angel Reese. Recently, the owner made some remarks about Clark's fans, accusing them of being racist and sexist. A diehard Tennessee Vols fan could have hated our Yukon Huskies, but they would have been going way too far if they sent death threats to the Yukon players. And that's what they've done. That's what Caitlin Stans have done. This comment is surprising, especially since Clark has been successful in drawing large audiences and viewership across different platforms. A diehard Celtics fan could hate the Lakers. And you know what? <laughs> if we being honest, that Celtics fan base has definitely gone too far with some of their racist remarks and their treatments of players. It's not okay. The host of the show can't believe that someone could own a sports team without any business savvy, especially when they make such controversial comments about a player who has really brought attention to the league. Come on now, that's not acceptable. I mean, honestly, imagine if one of the stands said the things that they were saying. What if they said it to your daughter, your wife, your cousin, your sister? Folks might be ready to fight, okay? So... Caitlin, unfortunately for her, this is a group that is attached to her, not her asking this group to follow. It seems that they found a home in this fan base, thinking that that's where it was. Recently, the owner of the Atlanta Dream made some eyebrow-raising statements, saying they want new fans who look and act a certain way. This wording suggests they might not be interested in white fans or families who support the WNBA, particularly those backing Caitlin Clark. But... Recently, some things have shown where Caitlyn recently liked a post by Taylor Swift and it was supporting VP Harris. And on that post, all she did was like it. And this Caitlyn Stans group that I'm talking about, the Stans have now split against Caitlyn. They're actually going against Caitlyn. I'm going to read some of the tweets. This is what they're saying to Caitlyn now. I was just starting to finally pay some attention to the WNBA because somebody was actually worth watching and then you caved. Another fan said, definitely should have stayed out of politics at Caitlin Clark. I love watching you, but now I refuse after seeing you support Taylor Swift and Kamala. Why did you like Taylor Swift's post endorsing Kamala? We thought you were like us. What's going on? Her comments seem to reflect what Angel Reese said on her podcast, where she accused Caitlin Clark's fans of being sexist and racist. So Caitlin had these big expectations when she came into the league, and she's clearly exceeding all of them, not on the court, not only on the court, but off of the court being an ambassador for these brands. While it's true that there are some problematic fans on both sides, it's not fair to label the entire fan base based on a few bad apples. Every fan group has its extremes, and the word fan actually comes from fanatic. But something sinister is happening online with Caitlyn's fan base and these stands that needs to be addressed. So all I'm saying is sports hate is okay. It's acceptable. It's actually welcome. We love the passionate fans, but some of y'all, y'all are taking it too far, man. Do better. 
It's doubtful that either Reese or the Dream owner found enough comments to justify calling out sexism or racism among millions of fans. Bad behavior exists everywhere, but it seems these owners are missing the bigger picture. That too, you know, when I was driving to the game today, obviously it's annoying because um, there were way too many Caitlyn fans. But like, it just kudos because. Yeah. It's amazing to see so many people in women's basketball jerseys. It's amazing to see the excitement and the the joy that comes out of that. So although I feel like our Dallas fans could have done better, <laughs> I I had mixed feelings obviously seeing all the Caitlyn jerseys in our home, but it's it's an amazing sign for women's basketball and it's just great how how far we've come and it's just fun. Yeah. If I were Kathy Engelbert, I would think seriously about addressing this kind of language from team ownership. Yeah, it's kind of funny. I don't know why they would be starstruck with me, but they're all, Aaron Judge is huge, but all of It's unclear how much money the WNBA is actually making, especially since the league has never turned a profit. With the new television deal not yet in effect, I would impose a fine of $250,000 on the owner for her hateful comments and unfounded assumptions that Caitlin Clark's fans are racist and aggressive. It's one thing to pay attention to this little girl, Angel Reese, when she's winning national championship. All right, that's fine. She goes into the WNBA and has been a complete pain in the ass. She's ridden the coattails of Caitlin Clark to some level of fame. In fact, I think she's on like a Reese's Pieces uh, chocolate candy cereal box. Whatever. Yeah, but I've had enough. I mean, honest to God, now she has taken to two things that, well, most women go to in sports when it's not going their way. Shaking their ass and calling people racist. Angel Reese is now wearing, well, I don't know, far too little clothes. Put some clothes on, young lady, and act like an adult, but this kind of rhetoric raises concerns, particularly for Renee Montgomery, who should consider how networks might react if fans start tuning out. What she's really doing is following the playbook. It didn't go well for me. White girl is successful. White girl more popular. White girl must be bad. Bad white girl. We see it in politics with bad orange man. And of course your fans are racist. You racist. They recently invested a significant amount in a media deal largely because of the interest generated by Caitlin Clark's supporters. So some idiot laying in bed says something and we're supposed to answer her stupidity. That's what that is right there. That's what that is. Some idiot laying in bed, saying stupid stuff, and away you go. You left no crumbs. Oh, boy. Okay, that's Angel Reese's response. Uh, that means that you're right. I agree. You told the truth. Let's take a moment to listen to this rant. It's okay to be a hater in sports. Like, hating in sports is a part of the game. Like, I like when our fans are so engaged and so passionate that they just don't like the other team. But being racist, sexist, and violent with your words, come on now, what are we doing? It sounds like someone who doesn't really understand business. It's frustrating to see such statements when it could impact the league negatively. Well, you know what? I, all right, let's just say that people, uh, these idiots are true. So what? Uh, who cares? No, nobody is an, is a Caitlin Clark fan because they're against Angel Reese. Like I've been to the games. There isn't anybody that cares about Angel Reese, but there are a ton of people that care about Caitlin Clark. But just says some woman talks like this and talks real fast laying in bed. The issue here is that everyone is being grouped together, which is unfair. Sure, every fan base has its share of extreme fans, but to generalize and label all fans under one umbrella is just ignorant, especially from a business standpoint. As an owner, this behavior is troubling. Honestly, Kathy Engelbert should think about removing her from ownership altogether. I really hope this situation doesn't get brushed aside. If it does, fans might consider boycotting some Indiana Fever playoff games. A gross attack on people who simply like enjoying watching Caitlin Clark play basketball. What was Reese's response? Nah. Instead of denouncing the post or not paying attention, she showed full support for it and wrote in the comments, you left no crumbs. Imagine the impact if a game that should attract millions of viewers ends up with only the usual 500,000 attendees. New fans will quickly grow tired of being labeled as sexist or racist. It's absurd. You know, it's a tired story. It really is. We understand the legendary OG lesbians, the African-American lesbians, the African-American lesbian fans of the WNBA who have not grown the league even a little bit in 27 years are all upset. 
It's shocking that owners, players, and former players don't see the value in this new wave of fans and viewership. They should be embracing this growth instead of pushing people away with such negative rhetoric. When it's not going well for you, claim racism. When it's going well for you, claim victim slash racism. We get it. We understand. And frankly, I just laugh at it. I know we're all supposed to take it serious. And racism, real racism, is serious. Very serious. And sure, it's still here. Black to white, white to black. Racism is everywhere. But not here. The real issue here is the way fans are being lumped together, which is just not right. I went to a fever game, and I saw a bunch of little kids wearing 22 jerseys, and if this idiot thinks it's because of, well, I'm wearing this jersey because I don't like Angel Reese. I think if you ask most of them, they'd say, who's Angel Reese? Every sports fan base has its share of extreme individuals, but generalizing everyone is a huge mistake, especially from a business perspective. Uh, the biggest impediment to Caitlin Clark's ascension, to athletic immortality, is not the gaggle of angry and jealous black women determined to diminish the WNBA star's rookie season. Angel Reese, Cheryl Swopes, Diamond DeShields, Kennedy Carter, Teresa Weatherspoon, Lisa Leslie, Don Staley, and the last remnants of black Twitter, they're no match for Clark's basketball prowess. They are the seven dwarves. You have to use Google to remember their names. Sleazy Reese, Grumpy Swopes, Dopey DeShields, Angry Carter, Bashful Leslie, Weavy Weatherspoon. Staley, of course, is the evil queen of women's hoops. As an owner, this behavior is incredibly irresponsible. Honestly, Kathy Engelbert should consider removing this owner from her position. It's shocking to see such comments, and if this continues to go unnoticed, fans might think about boycotting Indiana Fever playoff games. Imagine if a game that should draw millions ends up with only the usual 500,000 attendees. New fans will quickly get fed up with being labeled as sexist or racist. It's absurd. She's the puppet master secretly pulling the strings of bigotry that denied Clark a spot on the Olympic team and fueled the petty commentary surrounding the WNBA's Rookie of the Year discussion. But Don Staley and the Dwarves are largely powerless and ineffectual. Clark can handle the haters. Her stellar play has exposed the bitter as fraud. Clark's real obstacles are her lovers the mob of fans triggered by dwarves, the people who want to turn their idol into a victim. A victimhood mentality could derail Caitlin Clark's historic season. It's baffling that the Atlanta Dream co-owner doesn't appreciate how Caitlin Clark fans helped make one of the most attended WNBA games in Georgia. This kind of ignorance and apparent racial bias is unacceptable. If she truly feels this way, she might as well just say it outright. I don't like white people or I don't like conservative America. Regardless of Caitlin Clark's political views, she's an incredible player who doesn't mix sports with politics. And that's why fans want to watch her play. It could prevent Clark from reaching her full potential this year. Clark has a chance to put together the greatest rookie season in the history of professional sports. Let me repeat that. The greatest, most impactful, most impressive rookie season in the history of pro sports. She could do what Michael Jordan could not do. What Magic Johnson and Larry Bird did not do. Neither did Patrick Mahomes, Tom Brady, Babe Ruth, or Tiger Woods. This whole situation is just so irresponsible. I can hardly believe what's happening. This situation is blowing up and she's facing backlash from thousands of comments. If Caitlin Clark leads the fever to the WNBA title in October, she will have completed the most impressive rookie season in the history of pro sports, snatching the distinction from Jackie Robinson, or Jim Brown, or Wayne Gretzky, or Wilt Chamberlain, or Iron Mike Tyson. It's truly embarrassing. The WNBA has struggled for years, relying on the NBA for support while not being profitable themselves. Fans weren't showing up or tuning in, but they thought, hey, the NBA has our back.
Last night, the Phoenix Mercury faced off against the LA Sparks, and rookie Rakia Jackson was in the spotlight. Many consider her one of the top rookies from this year's WNBA class, alongside Camila Cardoso and Cameron Brink. In a surprising turn of events, Brittany Griner had a major meltdown during the game. Despite being significantly taller at 6 feet 9 inches, Jackson stood her ground against Griner. The aftermath has led to a flood of jokes about Griner's actions, especially since she got into a scuffle with someone much smaller than herself. Griner's involvement in the incident has drawn criticism, highlighting how she was dragged into a situation that many feel was unnecessary. It's certainly been a topic of conversation today as fans react to what unfolded on the court. During a recent game between the Phoenix Mercury and the Los Angeles Sparks, Brittany Griner and rookie Rakia Jackson were ejected after a heated confrontation. With less than 20 seconds left in the second quarter, Mercury guard Celeste Taylor was at the free throw line. After making one of her shots, Jackson and her teammate Lee Yoeru attempted to box out Griner. In the process, Griner swung her arm and seemed to catch Jackson in the face. The situation escalated quickly, with both players exchanging words before being separated by teammates and coaches. Griner was visibly upset, while Jackson stood her ground despite the height difference. The incident drew a lot of attention and jokes on social media about Griner's reaction. Ultimately, both players received two technical fouls for their actions, leading to their ejections. This marked Jackson's first career ejection, and she was averaging impressive stats this season. The Mercury went on to win the game 85-81, while both teams prepare for their final regular season matchups. That's pretty amusing, honestly. Rhea Jackson really stood her ground against the league's big star, Brittany Griner. After 14 years in the league, it's surprising to see Griner arguing with a rookie. If the comments circulating online are true, it could get even wilder. I checked what seems to be Griner's Instagram account, and it looks like she's been getting roasted. In response to some of the backlash, she said, Come and get me then. It raises eyebrows. Why does it seem like some players want to fight women? Fans are questioning whether these comments are real, and many hope they're not. After being ejected from the game, Jackson received a warm welcome from LA fans when she returned from halftime. This season, she's averaging 13.2 points, 3.8 rebounds, and 1.5 assists per game, making her one of the standout rookies in the WNBA. Her performance only highlights how impressive Caitlin Clark has been this year as well. It's pretty wild, right? Rhea Jackson scoring 13.2 points as a rookie is impressive, but Griner's numbers are even better at 19 points and 2 rebounds. It's unfortunate for Griner, especially after 14 years in the league, to be getting into it with a rookie. Honestly, I'm putting my money on Rhea in a two-round TKO against Griner. Sure, Griner has the height and strength advantage, but Jackson showed she's not backing down. The comments about sending Griner back to Russia are flying around, especially considering her past experiences there. It's crazy how she's been getting dragged online. Particularly since she's been in the league for so long, Rhea has heart and isn't afraid to stand up to the league's giant. I've seen people say that while Angel Reese gets all the attention, Rhea has incredible potential. And seriously, why was Rhea ejected for just defending herself? It raises some eyebrows. I love how Rhea said that men can catch these hands too. Some fans are even saying Rhea is their new favorite rookie over Caitlin Clark. At the end of the day, whether you're a man or a woman, you have to stand up for yourself. And let's not forget about how Brittany Griner's trade is often considered one of the worst in sports history, risking national security just to bring her back from Russia. What a mess.